What is going on, YouTube fan? It's your boy Tony Two Times, and we back with another episode of Hood Tales, man. Be sure to like the video so we can put it in rotation. Be sure to share so everybody can see it. Be sure to comment. Let me know who y'all want to see next. Today, we taking it to Detroit, the Midwest. Let's get right into it. Detroit, Michigan. Home of Motown. Classic music. The Motor City in the earlier days. Detroit was filled with car factories and good paying jobs and hard working class people. The economy in the city was booming. Not to mention the D-Town music scene, but through all the classic records and car plants, Detroit always had an underworld. Pimps and players with a Midwest swing, hustlers getting plenty of cash with long Cadillacs. And for the newer generation, two brothers from Detroit would lock the streets down. The Powell brothers ran a few businesses in the Detroit area, one being eight mile run a sports bar on 8 Mile Road. The brothers were natural born hustlers and leaders, making money on the surface, running a legit company, and providing a source of entertainment for the community. But under the surface, the brothers were alleged to be two of the biggest hustlers in the Motor City, having a crew with about 11 or 12 people all through the city to handle business for them, with one man being the kind of operation manager to oversee the sales and collect money from all parties involved. Allegedly, the Power Brothers would use their legit money to buy foreign cars, take the cars to get modified with secret compartments to hide product. Members of the organization would be given an assignment or mission to deliver or pick up product from different states, whether it was Mexico, Arizona, or another place. Smack, Fent, Coke, and grass would be scooped up, stashed properly, and brought back to the city. Once back in the D, the members who completed the move would allegedly be asked to drop the car off to a location as workers removed the product, took it to stash houses to bag up to hit the streets, or stash the bricks for bigger players in the game. Sources allege at first the operation started out small, just a couple of brothers and friends trying to make a few extra dollars. But as the team started shaking and baking, rubbing elbows with the right people, the money and product skyrocketed. The amount of cash being made was said to be crazy, and the brothers allegedly made sure everybody ate. The Power Brothers did good at trying to be regular civilians and blend in with everyday life, focus on their businesses, their religion, and raising families. But under all, the, all that, millions of dollars was being made, and the brothers had the Detroit streets and a vice grip. Since the 80s, the Motor City lost a lot of its factories and jobs. Whereas though what used to be an even economy for the haves and have nots became abandoned homes, once owned by middle class factory workers and one of the toughest cities in America. As the Power Brothers were growing up, they realized in order to succeed, they had to stick together and hustle hard. But money like this doesn't come without pressure from the streets. Stick up kids on every corner, jealous people, and just flat out goons will lead to the brothers to keep around a few good men just in case things got complicated but as the product was moving and money was being made for the time being the streets were happy but as we all know where there's a lot of money being made and street activity danger is not too far behind and as the power brothers were focused on handling business the feds had already been watching the brothers for over a year and soon all the money and years of building a successful organization would come crashing down around the brothers. And the feds wanted the Power Brothers to open the books and show them money. But as we all know, when the feds come, they already got you. Surveillance and phone taps had been going on for a year, and soon raids and seizures would start, including $800,000 worth of jewelry, luxury cars, including two Bentleys, a Ferrari, Rolls Royce, and boats. 12.8 million in cash, homes in a few different states, and the prosecutor wanted the Power Brothers to pay $86.2 million to the state of Michigan if convicted, alleging the brothers and their team sold tons of smack and thousands of pounds worth of grass. Allegedly seizing 66 pounds of smack, 12 bricks of girl, and a thousand pounds of grass from one home. But even though the Power Brothers were in trouble, it wasn't over just yet, and we all know money talks. 
and with a beast of a lawyer, the brothers were able to stay on the streets even after being found guilty and took sentencing. The Power Brothers knew this was probably their only time and last run as free men and got in a fight or flight mindset, took what cash they had, split it up, and they hit the road and went their separate ways. Both on the run, but their freedom was short-lived. With informants and FBI tracking, they tracked one of the brothers to a home in St. Louis, Missouri, with over $724,000 and multiple cell phones. The other brother was eventually caught in Atlanta, Georgia, with over $50,000 and a fake birth certificate. The game was over. Their street team all received different times for their roles in the organization. But unfortunately, both Power Brothers would get an L and be sentenced to life in prison. After all the hard work, building what they felt as though a way to eat and feed the streets, the feds took everything, most importantly, their freedom. The Power Brothers had it all. It goes back to the old saying, get in and get out. Don't thank you the exception. If they want you, they'll find a way to get you, right or wrong. I don't wish life in prison on nobody. And y'all already know my saying, succeed not to fail. So you won't be just another hood to it. Man, this is a crazy story. You know, shout out to the D, Detroit. You know what I mean? Y'all been on my heels about talking about y'all city. And it's a lot that go on in Detroit, as we all know. And like I said, which once was a bustling city with Motown and the car factories and a lot of middle class people, a lot of people from the South moved to Detroit, a lot of people from all over because they had good jobs and the black community could you know, provide for their families and strive for a better life. But once they shut the factories down, it really left more of the streets around. The streets already was in Detroit, but now you had people that used to work, go to work every day. Now they was forced out to be on the corners to find a way to provide for families. Not saying it's right, but sometimes, man, you be forced into them situations. And some people just be luck of the draw. They get in the game and they get rich, but you gotta know when to get out. When you start saying millions of dollars, you know they not far behind. So you gotta take that money, try to invest it, do something legit with it before they come get it. Cause once they come, it's over. Be sure to like, comment, share this video, man. I appreciate the love and support. Y'all already know, man. Leave your comments below. Love, fam. I'm out.